fourth kind. I don't have the DVD anymore, I rented it online and returned it yesterday. I wasn't sure if I was gonna do a review. Anyway, Dr. Abigail Tyler is a psychologist, I think. Or a psychiatrist. I'm not sure if she can, you know, dole out prescriptions or not. Anyway, she's a psych... something in Nome, Alaska, where a lot of people have gone missing. And she starts to suspect that this might not be from, you know, natural means, earthly means. I basically rented this because of Mila Jovovich. She's really hot and usually a good actress. Elias Koteas, Koteas is also usually a quite good actor. And they both deliver good performances in this. It's really unfortunate that they're just about the only ones. I mean, even Will Patton, okay, he has moments, but on the whole, he's not that good. I'd say the children were probably the worst, and yes, of course, you know, what do you expect, kind of thing, but still, they're really bad, especially the girl. This whole thing really goes for very similitude, you know, they really badly want you to be convinced of, well, it's right there in the title, so I'm just gonna spell it out, alien abduction. Because of this, the acting performances and the dialogue really try to convince you, and that leads to a lot of heavy-handedness, I suppose you'd say, in the dialogue, and overacting in the performances. This is based on something that may or may not have happened. I already know, but I'm not gonna spoil it for anyone who wants to watch this without knowing. And they edit in the archive footage, the actual footage, actual audio and actual video recordings of people who have experienced what this film dramatizes. Sometimes this kind of works okay, and I suppose on the whole it isn't too intrusive, but at times this really feels like it was edited by someone who just got to sit at an editing computer for the first time in their life. It's just playing with all the toys that comes with. We also get some kind of strange photography. At one point the camera is like behind, I guess, a fireplace. And, you know, you sort of see the, the glass and you see the people. And this lasts for maybe a second and a half. That's not enough to make that have any kind of impact as far as building an atmosphere. And it just feels strange. It's like just enough that it stands out, that it makes you think, wait, what was that? And that's kind of it. It just... And this happens a couple of times, you know. It just feels like they didn't completely know what they were doing with the camera, and they just threw in stuff that they maybe thought would be effective, and it just distracts you. This also makes really excessive use of that whole thing of panning a camera and then panning it back and ooh, something changed while it was panned away. Okay, yes, we get it. This is not new. We've seen it before. And it happens, I don't know, three or four times in this. Three or four separate instances in a 90-minute movie. And that's just way more than is necessary. The camera also, we get a lot of handheld, and at times it just, it, you know, too zoomed in, too close shots, too much bouncing in the camera, and it just doesn't add anything. This is not a Paul Greengrass movie, this is not an action film or even really a thriller, it's basically a mystery. It just, it's counterproductive, again. 
So there are a lot of technical aspects where this could really be better. But this will be really fantastic for the people it's made for, I suppose. Because this is made for the people who want to believe in alien abduction, for example. You know, the whole, if you enjoy conspiracy theories about alien contact, this movie is for you. What I will say, though, is you do not get to see very much directly. It's kind of like Paranormal Activity meets E.T., you know, it's, it hints. It's what, you know, if Paranormal Activity was, you know, a different version of The Exorcist, then this is kind of, you know, the different version of something like E.T. or, you know, other movies like that. I don't watch an awful lot of them. And, yeah, it, it, it really hints more than anything. It wants you to use your own imagination. And normally I would praise that, and I will say, you know, it was nice of them to go for that. For me it didn't work all that much. Some of the time it does, kind of, but they kind of reuse the same effects over and over. I, at one point, for this brief, I guess you'd call it exposition portion, we get so many lightning flashes. Again, it's like the guy just got the strobe light and, you know, he just really wanted to to play around with it, you know, and they just kept using it and they didn't cut any of those lightning flashes out and it just doesn't really build mood as much as just draw attention to itself. This is really just for that group of people, the group of people who want to believe in this and who kind of just want a big screen production that tells them, yes, you're right, all those theories you have, you're absolutely right. I think this works in pretty much all of them. And what's odd is, in spite of how much it hints, it also really doesn't leave that much room for interpretation. I mean, what you do get pretty well leads to a single conclusion. I mean, maybe the details will vary, but on the whole, I don't see that much debate going on about the overall, the details, but not the overall of what happened here. There's really only one way to look at it. So I guess that's about what there is to say about it. Yo, it's just hot, as always. Yeah, that's it. So. You know, hope this helped you decide if you're gonna rent it or not. Apparently this had, you know, a big viral marketing campaign. I didn't follow that at all, so I don't even know if that would be active anymore, but anyway, that was my spoiler-free review of The Fourth Kind. Hope you enjoyed it. I will see you next time.